Welcome to part three of the WABC Jingle History, originally heard on Rewound Radio. Wow! John Wolfert, it's Jingle Time on Rewound Radio. Wow, wow, wow! We have arrived at the year 1970, and that was the start of a new decade, and it was also the start of a new philosophy regarding WABC's jingles. Rather than putting on a big package all at once, the station just added a cut here and there, keeping many of the previous jingles in place. Of course, at this time in radio history, the emphasis was on acapellas, short jingles, and music. 77 WABC. As we've mentioned, the WABC chime jingle was attached to the end of every song in the top 14, Other survey songs had the jingle without the chime, but now another phrase was added in front. The most music. W-A-B-C. It was all about pushing music. Music is a message. In this era, Pams continued to produce many jingles for W-A-B-C, and the station hardly used any of them. For example, Pam's created an entire package built around the phrase, music is our message. WABC did use that phrase in their promos and on their posters. But as for the jingles, just a couple of cuts made it to the air, including this cut, which was actually part of Series 40. WABC, music is our message. One well-known a cappella that was overused was this one, featuring the bass voice of the great singer Jim Clancy. W. ABC. 1970 was the year that Dan Ingram requested a new opening jingle for his show. And so the familiar theme was replaced with this a cappella. Dan Ingram Electric Radio Theater is on the Don't worry, he went back to his previous theme after a year or two. Speaking of things that were overused, this Sonovox drop-in was inserted over anything and everything for a while. Right on. If you needed further evidence that the uh, jingles were being reduced to their absolute minimum at this time, they did get a new set to introduce Solid Gold songs. 63 Gold. You see what I mean? Another change was made to the jingle which tagged some of the songs. Music Radio WABC. That a cappella was heard at the end of songs that did not get the chime jingle. In 1971, Pam's produced Series 41 for WABC. And again, WABC only used a few of the jingles, including these. WABC. WABC. Series 41 was called Music Radio. WABC had adopted that slogan, and in their own unique style, they made it one word, Music Radio, so they could trademark it. This package also included a new jingle for Harry Harrison's morning show, which was based on an old Maxwell House coffee commercial. Listen to the sound of the Maxwell House coffee pot at work. Since one of Harry's trademark phrases was, put the coffee on, that happy percolator sound found its way into his jingle. Coffee and music with Harry Harrison. This Sonovox drop-in also became a familiar sound around this time. WABC New York. In 1972, WCBS-FM in New York changed their format to oldies. They had been doing a progressive rock format, and 
FM radio was slowly infringing on AM's monopoly on music listening. New York was a town that enjoyed its oldies. So WABC did start highlighting the fact that they played oldies too. The best of the new and the best of the gold on WABC. And there was this to introduce the late 50s, early 60s songs. Two wops on us, bom de bom bom bom. Two wops on us, bom de bom bom on WABC. If I can inject a personal note here, 1971 was the year that I was hired at PAMS, which was my dream job at the time, a fact that was broadcast to the world by Cousin Bruce Morrow on none other than, well, you know. 77 W-A-B-C. Right on with Bruce Morrow. Doesn't that playing do something to you? How much can you give me not to play? That's funny, I like that. Half another fine product of the American Beverage Corporation. Bruce Morrow, New York. I want to wish uh, Jonathan Wolford. Good luck, he's going down at the Pams in Dallas, Texas. Good luck, John. You say hello to Bill. Well, thanks, Bruce. You stepped on the vocal, but it's okay. I'm over it. <laughs> but uh, the beginning of that was probably a little confusing to your ear because you were hearing this commercial running underneath the a cappella jingle running underneath the Sonovox, and that was typical of the way the station was produced at that time. They would play things over and under these acapellas, which sometimes worked, but in that case it was just very confusing because you had two musical things going on at the same time that had nothing to do with each other. But they were just trying to keep everything tight. Back to my personal story for a moment. By 1972, PAMS had discovered that I could operate the Sonovox, so they let me start doing that. And what was the first Sonovox project I did at PAMS? Unbelievably, it was for WABC. Johnny Donovan. In July 72, Johnny Donovan started at WABC. He had been at WORFM and other stations before that. And the way it worked was whenever a new DJ was added, the production people at WABC would send a tape down to PAMS with all of the DJ jingles that were in use at the time. So maybe they'd pull all of Ron Lundy's carts or all of uh, Cousin Brucie's carts, and they'd put them on a tape and say, these are the DJ jingles we're using. And the jingles would come from many different series that had evolved through the years. So it was a, a real mix of things, including some edits. And they said to Pams, okay, now we have a new guy, so we need all of these cuts remade for the new guy. And, uh, you know, it was just amazing to me after growing up with WABC and having it be part of my life to have at least my mouth, if not my voice, now on WABC. News before the hour, a service of ABC News. The most music on WABC New York. Johnny Donovan. Yeah, baby, look what you've done for me there. That's Al Green on 77. Johnny Donovan, WABC Radio. If you were away for the weekend, we'll drive home together tonight. Hope everything is going all right for you. Just take it. Uh, easy. Hmm. But don't go to sleep. It's Eagles. Let's talk about that jingle you just heard where music radio was between the W and the ABC. That was the whole concept behind Pam Series 42A, which was made in 1972. It put all sorts of phrases between the W and the other call letters. WABC didn't use any of it, but they did ask for a few extra cuts in that style, including that one, which was heavily used. It's called Tube. W Music Radio ABC. It was called Tube because there's a tuba in it. Hard to pick out, but it's in there. The names Pams came up with for individual cuts usually had some sick joke or twisted pun behind them. Another thing that transpired was Series 44. Now, this was an enormous package. It was built around the phrase, The Music's on Us. 
which was supposed to be kind of a double meaning thing, saying that the music is on WABC, so the music's on us, but also it's like we're treating you to the music. You know, the music's on us. It's, uh, it's for you. So, again, this package had something like 60 cuts in it that Pam's did, and WABC used hardly any of them. They were being as selective with the jingles as they had normally been selective with the songs that they added to the playlist. They did use this. The music's on us on WABC. Just a plain a cappella, and they did use this. Music radio WABC. The music's on us. It was just a strange, strained time, and it was going to become even more so because, as I mentioned, WCBS-FM went oldies in 72. Pam's, just a few months earlier, had done a package for WCAU-FM in Philadelphia, another owned by CBS station, another oldies station. And when CBS-FM in New York wanted to use those jingles, they, of course, came to Pam's. And Pam's was put into this position of, well, we, uh, we really want to protect our relationship with WABC, but they're not using much of anything or buying much of anything. And here's a good sale, and one's AM and one's FM, and uh, one's top 40 and one's oldies. What could it hurt to do the CBS FM jingles? Well, you'll get the answer to that in our next segment. But speaking of WCBS FM, you know, we are into our second hour of this WABC jingle history, and it probably could have been done in a minute. The reason I know this is because I did it once. On June 8th, 1991, WCBS-FM was in the middle of one of their rock and roll radio greats reunion weekends, where they'd bring a lot of famous DJs who had been on the air in New York back, and they each did a show and they would talk about the good old days and so forth. Cousin Brucey was sort of the host. He had a regular show on CBS FM at this point. And on that particular day, I happened to be in the studio hanging out with Bruce for old time's sake, just like I used to do in the old days, go hang out in the studio with Brucey. And we were talking about the jingles, and then this happened. Well, I'm a traveling man. There's a number one song in that Super Silver Dollar Survey, Cousins, Ricky Nelson. On this night in 1961, that's from WABC, the Silver Dollar Survey, the Swing and Sound Survey. Uh, Jonathan Wolford just gave me a list. This is wild. All the jingle freaks out there, listen to this now. Here's the, the slogan lines of the jingle chron- uh, chronology used by WABC. By I'll give you a couple of years. 1963, we were the All-Americans. All-Americans. 64, we were the action, as you heard that. 65, the go-go thing, right, that came in. The in-sound was 66. Music explosion, 66. 67, fun vibration. Remember the word vibes, vibrations came in. Mayor Lindsay, fun city. That's right, major fun city. That's that's right, Mayor Lindsay. Uh, 1968, music, pow, 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 right? And uh, 1969, music comes here to play. 70 was music radio and the music on us. Music's on us, 1972. I'm going to keep that. Nobody in the world but Jonathan Wolf would keep that. <laughs> With no light. That is absolutely amazing. All right. We finished uh, the, the, uh, what, the top one. We played the top 15. Is that what okay, so you 15? see, what it could have been done in a minute, but I prefer the way we're doing it here. As our story about WABC jingles continues, we have reached the early 70s. It's a period of change for the sound of the station. There are fewer jingles, with many of them being short or just a cappellas. Even though DJ jingles were added as new jocks came on board and a few special jingles were produced for contests, the basic station jingle sound did not evolve very much between 1970 and 1973. PAMS did continue to make new jingle packages with WABC in mind, but the station passed on many of them. For example, they didn't use any of PAMS Series 39. Made you hungry for more. WABC, right on. 
they didn't use most of series 41. Or 42. W most music ABC. Or 43. W ABC. Or 44. W ABC. The music's on us. In fact, on April 7th, 1972, I was at WABC hanging out in the studio with Dan Ingram, and without warning, he ended his show this way. Sorry, Bobby, there's more important things to do here. Ladies and gentlemen, in our, sitting in our studio with our show today is a representative from Pam's Productions, which is a firm which uh, records our jingles in Dallas, Texas. And uh, the Pam's people, he can't hear me, he's in the control room right now. The Pam's people uh, don't know that we use only one or two of the many, many jingles they've recorded for us, so he's, we're going to turn the speaker on and, and give him a, we're going to play a medley of all the jingles I almost never use. Okay, let's do a first one. Dan Ingram. We used that uh, for a while and it went out of style and we had this one. Big Dan. We have never used that one. Now we have this one here. Never used this at all. Big Dan. Not once. Gonna treat you right. 77 WABC. Let's have some fun. The Southwest accent. Anyway, then, then there was this one. You. You're with music Never used this once. Never. Dan Ingram. And then there was this one, of course. Dan Ingram. And then, of course, there's this one, which we have used. On the Dan Ingram show. This is news from American Contemporary Radio, and I'm Warren Dean in New York. By the way, in later years, Dan would talk about that moment and recall that Bill Meeks from Pam's was there that day. In this instance, Mr. Ingram is incorrect. It was me. All through the years, there were always other jingle producers trying to wrestle the WABC account away from Pam's. Some of them presented sample cuts to WABC, and some even used those cuts on their demo tapes, despite the fact that there was no way WABC would buy or use them. For example, as far back as the mid-60s, Pepper Sound Studios in Memphis included this jingle on the demo of their double exposure package. Hunting for music. WABC 77 in New York. Yeah, right. Of course, Pepper in that era was notorious for using famous call letters on their jingles, whether those stations were using the jingles or not. And a few years later, when the company's name had become Pepper Tanner, they put out an entire package sung for WABC. The station never touched it, but Pepper Tanner wanted potential clients to think they did. Here's part of that demo presentation. W-A-B-C, reaching out, touching you. From Pepper Tanner. Woo! Reaching out and touching you. Reaching out and touching you. Reaching out. Reaching out, touching you. 20 cuts, 15 vocals, 15 instrumentals, 5 acapellas. Reaching out. Touching you. WABC, touching you. 77. WABC, reaching out, touching you. Pepper Tanner did not get those jingles on the air, but other companies kept knocking on WABC's door, too. TM Productions in Dallas made several presentations to the station. At one point, they sang a cut from their package, The Penetrators, with the L.A. vocal group. W.A.B.C. New York. 
And at another time, TM did an audition cut from their package, Listen to the Music. Music sounds best on WEBC. There was even a New York commercial writing team, Liberty McBrien, who presented some custom jingles to WABC. Music Radio, 77, WABC. Yeah, none of those were what WABC was looking for, but the jingle history of WABC did change dramatically in the summer of 1974 because of behind-the-scenes events in the jingle industry. 74 was a rough year for PAMS. Most stations were ordering fewer jingles, many of them being content to have just one or two shotgun jingles. Understandably, it was hard to stay confident in the jingle business, so Bill Meeks felt that Pams had to diversify. He decided to enter the field of syndicated programming for radio stations, just like TM had done several years before. Pams wanted to sell the programming and the automation equipment as well. This was an expensive undertaking, using most of the resources that would normally be used to support the jingle business. Eventually, paychecks started to be late, and then they would sometimes bounce, and many key production and sales personnel thought it was best to leave PAMS to work somewhere else, or to become freelancers, or to start their own companies. Reluctantly, I too left PAMS at this time. Meanwhile, back in Memphis, by 74, Pepper Tanner had morphed into the William B. Tanner Company. Even though Pepper had begun making jingles in the late 1950s, the company had never had much success attracting big stations in major markets. So in 1974, when someone went to Memphis with a plan to get Tanner jingles onto some big-time influential stations, the company was all ears. The someone was a radio guy by the name of Bob Gross. 1256 WRC, back to sea time. Bob Gross cooking with the hits on the great 98 Loggins and Mesita and Company. I told you, a radio guy. Bob had been the promotion manager and a DJ on WRC in Washington, D.C. In 73, Pams had done a lot of production work for WRC, and Bob spent weeks at Pams in Dallas working with me and Chris Kershaw. He got to know both of us and get a taste of the jingle business. So when he left WRC and approached the William B. Tanner Company in 74, this was his pitch. He said, The problem with your product is you're making it in Memphis. These major market stations are looking for the Dallas sound, and I know who to call to make that happen. Let me hire these people in Dallas to create some jingle packages that WABC and WLS will like. We can give the jingles to those stations for free, and then lots of other stations will hear them and buy those packages for themselves. Oh, and to avoid any possible image problem, we should probably market the jingles under another name. And so was born Thunder Productions. WABC, as it turned out, was receptive to getting a Dallas jingle package for free, especially because Rick Sklar was upset that Pams had done oldies jingles for WCBS-FM in 1972. So in the late summer of 1974, the Pams jingles started to come off, and the Thunder jingles appeared. The best music, WABC. WABC did not want to get into a legal feud with PAMS about whether they could continue to air their jingles. But they didn't want to make an abrupt change and remove all their familiar PAMS cuts either. So they asked Thunder, Tanner, to copy several iconic PAMS jingles, which they did in December 1974. In fact, here I am slating the master tape. 
This is the Tanner WABC package, mixed December 2nd, 1974. Now, obviously, I confess to having worked on these, but even though some of the copies came close, to me, they were never as good as the originals. For example, here's a Pam's cut. WABC. And here's the Thunder copy. WABC. Another Pam's jingle. WABC. Good morning. And the remake. WABC. Good morning. Let's hear one more. Here's the Pam's original. 77 WABC Good morning And the Thunder version 77 WABC I guess they were close enough. Most listeners didn't know they weren't hearing the original jingles. But there were some new tracks created as well at this time. For example, there was a new show open jingle produced for Dan Ingram, which he used for several years. The WABC chime jingle remained on the air in 1974, although the phrase chime time had been replaced with music time.